Hello everyone, I'm Mrs. Minakshi Shrekandi from Walchand Institute of Technology, Sholapur. Welcome to the video lecture on Copy Constructor. Learning outcome, at the end of this session, students will be able to explain and write program using Copy Constructor. What are constructors? Constructors are nothing but special member function whose task is to initialize the objects of its class. These are called as special because its name is the same as the class name. This can be best illustrated by an example where we have a class called as number and there are two data members A and B and under the public section we have a member function. Here you can see that this member function name is same as the class name. So this is called as a constructor. So the constructor has been declared here. Now here the constructor has been defined. The role of the constructor is to initialize the data members A and B equal to 0. In the main, we have created the object N for the class number. Now the constructors are invoked whenever an object of its associated class is created. So in this case, the constructor number is invoked when the object N has been created. So when object N has been created, automatically the constructor number gets invoked and the data members A and B will be initialized to 0 for the object N. It is called constructor because it constructs the values of data members of the class. So when the constructor is invoked, whatever data member values are there, those values will be initialized for the objects. That's why it is called as constructor. Let us see what is the need of constructors. If a normal member function is defined for zero initialization, we need to invoke the function for each object separately. This would be inconvenient if there are large number of objects. So in this example, let us see this. We have a class called as number and two data members A and B. And the public section we have a member function called as initialize. So the member function has been declared in the public section and the member function has been defined outside the class. The role of the member function initialize is to initialize the data members A and B with value 10 and B equal to 20. And in main function, suppose for the class number, we have created five objects that is N1 to N5 and each time I want to call the function initialize. Now every time I'm calling the function initialize by object n1, n1 dot initialize gets called and the values of a and b will be initialized to 10 and 20 for object n1. For n2 again the, the function gets called and the values of a and b will be initialized to 10 and 20 for object n2. And if suppose if I have 100 objects and every time I want to initialize the data members to some values for all the objects. Every time I have to call the initialize function separately by using each object separately. And this is very infeasible. So for that we are using constructor. So for a constructor there is no need to write any statement to invoke the constructor function. So when the objects for the class has been created it initializes its data member. So for constructor whenever a constructor has been defined there is no need to call the function separately by using object and the dot operator. That is the main advantage of using constructor. This can be best explained by declaring a constructor in the program. So let us see that. So here you can see that the constructor number has been declared because the name of the function is the same as the class name. So here is the constructor which has been declared and we have a constructor which has been defined here. The role of the constructor here is to initialize the data members A and B equal to 0. And when the objects are created, that time the constructors are invoked automatically and the values of A and B are initialized to 0 for all the objects. Let us see the characteristics of constructor. Before seeing the characteristic of constructor, let us consider an example where we have a class called a sample with data members A and B. And under public section, we have a constructor sample. The constructor sample has been defined outside the class, which initializes the data members A and B equal to 0. In the main function, we have declared the object for the class called as sample. Now, 
the first characteristic is they should be declared in the public section. Now here you can see the constructor has been declared or can be defined under the public section. They are invoked automatically when the objects are created. So when the object S has been declared, the constructor is invoked when the objects are declared. So it gets invoked and the data members for A and B are initialized to 0 for object S. They do not have written types, not even void and therefore they cannot return values. So in this the constructor do not return any values. They cannot be inherited though a derived class can call the base class constructor. Let us see the types of constructor. There are four types of constructor. The default constructor. A constructor that accepts no parameter is called as a default constructor. Parameterized constructor, the constructor that can take arguments are called as parameterized constructor. Do nothing constructor, the constructor that doesn't have any arguments and contains empty body and does not do anything and which is used to satisfy the compiler is called as a do nothing constructor. And the last type of constructor is a copy constructor. The constructor which is used to declare and initialize an object from another object that is copy the values of one object into the another object of the same class is called as copy constructor. Try to think an answer usually when the copy constructors are used. So the copy constructors are usually used when we want to declare and initialize an object from another object. As the name suggests, here we copy the values of one object into the another object of the same class. Let us consider an example where we have a class called as A and there are two data members M and N. Under the public section we have a parameterized constructor where it accepts two parameter and the values of M and N are initialized to X and Y. And we have one more type of constructor which is nothing but a copy constructor which has been defined inside the class. A copy constructor usually accepts the objects as parameter and it initializes the values of m and n with m and n of another object. Firstly we are creating the object a1 which by passing two parameters that is 10 and 20. This will invoke the parameterized constructor and m and n will be initialized to 10 and 20 for object a1. Now here we are created the object a2 by passing object a1. Here the copy constructor gets invoked. Here a1 is now copied to object t and by using t.m and t.n we are trying to access the data members of object a1 which are copied to data members m and n of object a2. So this is where we are invoking the copy constructor. So here the object a3 has been created and here we are assigning object a1 to a3. This will also invoke the copy constructor. So here a1 will be copied to object t and by using t.m and t.n we are accessing the m and n of object a1 which are assigned to m and n which are the data members of object a3. Let us consider example using copy constructor. So here we have a class called as number and we have two data members called as A and B and under public section we have a parameterized constructor where it accepts two parameter x and y which are initialized to A and B. We have one more constructor. This is nothing but a copy constructor which has been declared here and we have one more member function called as sum. Here the copy constructor has been defined. Here the member function sum has been defined where it finds the sum of the data members A and B and the result has been displayed. In the main function when object A has been created a parameterized constructor is invoked by passing two parameters to it that is 12 and 24. 12 and 24 will be assigned to data members A and B of object A. When object B has been created, 
a copy constructor is invoked because the object A has been passed as a parameter. Now this object A will be copied to X and by using X dot A and X dot B, we are trying to access the data members of object A that is 12 and 24 and those are assigned to A and B of object B. Now here, this will also invoke the copy constructor by passing the object A as the parameter to the copy constructor and again by using x dot A and x dot B, we are trying to access the members of object A which are initialized to A and B of object C. Now here, we are trying to find the sum of the data members of object A by calling the function sum which will find the sum of A and B. In this case, 12 and 24 are added and the result for object A has been displayed. So the result will be in this way. So the sum for object A is 36 will be displayed. Similarly, for object B, the sum function has been called and the result will be displayed in this way. Same for object C. By using object C, the sum function will be called and the result will be displayed. Let us consider one more example using copy constructor. So we have a class called as coordinate and there are two data members x and y and we have a parameterized constructor with two parameters. Here it is initializing x and y which are the data members with value of m and n. We have one more uh, constructor. In this case it is a copy constructor which has been declared in the class and we have one more member function called as display. Now here the copy constructor has been defined. Here the display function displays the coordinates of x and y in the coordinate form. In the main function, object 1 has been created by passing two parameters that is 36 and 48. Here it invokes a parameterized constructor and x and y are initialized to 36 and 48 for object 1. Here the object 2 has been created. So here it will invoke the copy constructor because object 1 has been passed as a parameter. Now it, it will initialize the data members of object 1 to the data members of object 2. After that, the coordinates of object 1 are displayed by calling the function display. By so here the coordinates of object 1 are displayed in this way. Those are 36 and 48. And similarly, the coordinates of object 2 are also displayed by calling the display function by using object 2. So the coordinates are displayed in this way that is 36 and 48. So these are my references. Thank you.